Hello there and welcome to the new data science case study and in this case study we will look at the stock market data to do the stock market prediction. So what do we have for this case study is the stock prices for Google and as you can see the file name is gog.csv which you can find it in the description and we will see the 1000 days worth of data for Google stock and then how we can predict it. So this case study will help you understand or will help you practice the questions related to the stock market data which is the Google stock data and after that you can apply that to any other stock data of your interest and keep on further refining your skills for the better prediction right. So no wonder it can help you earn some money as well. Alright so let's go ahead and look at the data. Alright so here we are uh, in this data set and this data set is uh, about as you can see is the stock market data. So the column over here time indicates the data from 23rd Feb 2013 to 13th Feb 2017 and it's a worth 1000 trading days. So from 1 to over here 1000 days worth of data and as I mentioned it is from 23rd Feb 2013 to 13th Feb 2017 and then its respective value what is the stock price on 23rd Feb then so on and so forth for the rest of the days and we see that uh, in on 23rd Feb the stock price was 392 and in 2017 it's 813 so it's more than double so if you have invested you must have you know got some good profit all right so let's go ahead and see this see the case study questions so the first question is that you need to read the csv file which is gog.csv you need to check the shape of the data set and should have 1000 rows and two columns so if the serial number column is coming then you need to drop that or ignore it then explain the key difference between the cross-sectional data and time series data and as you would have uh, by now by this time you would have got to know that this is a time series data then quick question which I mentioned for the understanding that what is the difference between cross section and time series if you not already know it will, it will be very helpful because sometimes you will, you will see this question even in the interview. After that you have what is the trend you observe in the value variable. Alright so obviously you know the stock price has doubled so there is definitely some sort of trend maybe cyclical maybe seasonal so what it is what trend you observe so depict it with a plot draw the lag plots so yt against yt plus one for the time series quick hint is the lag underscore plot function and that is mostly keeping in mind the python after that explain the stationary and why it is important for time series for a casting method very very important if you are attending an interview there is always a question if you are saying that you have done some time series related work and they will definitely ask you what do you understand by stationary, why it is important for time series and how do you figure it out whether a data is stationary or not. Okay, Test the stationary using the ADF, the augmented Dickey Fuller test and comment on the observation. So if you already don't know I have posted some videos earlier about uh, this particular case study or this particular ADF test and the time series forecasting project and uh, you may want to watch that out to even solve this and uh, would, uh, for this particular test as well. Then in addition is the D-trend data and the 12 lakh difference D-trend data stationary so by this time you know we based on the test we have uh, D-trended data with the 12 lakh difference and uh, made to make the series stationary. What does the null and alternative hypothesis state for ADF which is the ADF test you did it in the question number 6. Explain the difference between the seasonality and cyclic cyclicality. So what is the difference between seasonality and cyclic cyclicality very very important uh, for solving the case study or for solving the problems like the time series. And as I mentioned, these sort of questions you will definitely face in the interview if uh, you are saying that you have worked on the time series forecasting data sets or uh, have a knowledge about it. 
So these are like the question which really uncovers uh, if, if you are interviewer, you are taking interview, then you need to ask these sort of questions to really figure it out whether somebody really know the time about the time series or not. So from both the perspective. So what do you mean by decomposition of a time series? So what are the what are the things or what are the, uh, you know, plots or what are the uh, key topics that come out when you decompose a time series. After that, decompose the time series using the additive and multiplicative model. Now here I have directly set the additive model and multiplicative model. If you don't already know, I highly recommend you need to figure that out. What is the additive model? What is the multiplicative model? In which scenario you will going to use it? Because this is the basic fundamental understanding one need to have to really understand based on the data that they are handling that they need to apply the additive model or the multiplicative model. Otherwise, you, are, you may find that you are not getting the output as expected. All right. After that, plot the above decomposed uh, results and the comment on the observations about what do you see, what are the different factors that you understand when you plot the above decomposed results. All right. After that, you need to plot a moving average for the value column in the given data set. So you need to experiment with the couple of moving averages. It may be like three day, five day, 10 day. And another question which you may come across or you may think that uh, why does moving average is really required? What does it really do? When you plot the data, I'm sure that you will figure it out. But try to write your observation about uh, why do we, why do you really require the moving average and experiment, like I said, with the different types of moving averages. After that, explain why centered moving average is not considered suitable for forecasting. So again, you need to figure it out. You know, the, the question I'm giving you is, is, is sparking another question. If you not already know about centered moving average, then first of all, what it is and why it is not suitable for forecasting. All right. After that, plot the ACF and PACF for the time series data. So first of all, what do you mean by ACF? What's its full form? What is PACF? And uh, you need to plot it for, after knowing that you need to plot it for the time series data and you need to comment your observation about uh, what is your interpretation from both the charts and in which scenario and how you would going to use the ACF and PACF chart while building the model. After that, uh, how does an ACF and PACF plot help to identify whether a time series is stationary or not? Like I just mentioned in the, uh, while explaining the previous question that this, these two, two charts really helps you a lot in identifying what sort of model you need to follow for the time series data. So you need to explain in your own words uh, that uh, how it's identified whether a time series stationary or not and the parameters you need to use to build the model. All right. After that, question number 17 is the does the basic assumption of linear regression model that the observations are independent hold code in this case? Well, in explain in few words. So this is also an assumption related question. So you need to know about that if you not already know. Question number 18 is uh, split the data set into train and test. 90% is training and 10% is testing. Now it's up to you. You can experiment in, you know, 9, 80, 20, 70, 30. Generally, you know, we take 70, 30, but here I've just, since we just have 1000 rows, so 90, 10 is what uh, I have given, but no restriction. You can experiment with the 80, 20 or 70, 30 as well for model building, All right? Question number 19 is ARIMA models are denoted with the ARIMA notation PDQ. What does it stand for? So for, first of all, what is ARIMA or are there other models? What is a naive model? There are a lot of things which I have covered in my previous tutorials where I have explained about these topics. So if you are not, if you have not already watched that, I highly recommend that you watch it so that you know all of these terms, all of the different types of models and how the evaluation happens. What are the PDQ parameters? So all of these questions you should be able to answer once you, once you have seen that tutorial video where I've explained it. 
and I will put the comment, I will put the video in the description as well. After that, fit a manual ARIMA model using the ACF and PACF plots that we created in the previous uh, previous questions. Order is PDQ. Uh, PDQ is AR autoregressive, I is integrated and M is moving average. And in R and Python and summarize the model or your own choice, you know, whatever tool you want to use, you can even use that tool and figure it out whether this is really helping you. Um, question number 21, forecast the results from the above model and plot the graph depicting the same. Maybe you, what you can do is first plot it for next 10 days, for 20 days and then third, uh, 30 days so that uh, you know how you are forecasting the results and um, plot the graph depicting the same and write in your own words what do you really understand after implying the model and doing the forecasting. And finally the question we have is fit an auto ARIMA model uh, where the order PDQ is taken care by the package they are basically identified by by uh, or on their own you don't have to plot like ACF, PACF model and all uh, or the chart to identify the PDQ parameters but uh, this will going to help you automatically identify it and this is something which you can easily do it in R but I'm not sure if you have already something auto ARIMA as in Python but uh, worth figuring out if, if there is already somebody has done some work on that. Well, in my previous video where in the tutorial, I'm not really recollecting that uh, whether an auto ARIMA model was present. I'm sure it was not present because what I could recollect is that uh, I did the for loop to identify the PDQ parameters, what is the best. And uh, finally, you need to comment on the observations. Okay, let's see if there is any other question. Yeah, there is one more question. Uh, draw diagnostic plat plots for the above model and uh, comment on the observation from the plot. So what are the diagnostic plot that you were going to plot and you need to, you should know how to interpret that. And the final question, report performance parameters, MSE, MAE, RMSE and MIP for the test data and comment on the accuracy of the model. First of all, what are these metrics? How do you interpret that? And what is the best metric uh, that you will going to use to showcase your results to your business users or the end users so that they can easily understand it. So that's about the entire case study. And uh, this is just we are starting as you can, as I say in my every video that uh, we are scratching the surface, but there is a lot of things that one can do. Uh, by let's say adding the variable for example along with the stock data you have the data of volume there are a lot of lot of things if you are from the financial market world or the stock market world you would know that there are a lot of def different technical indicators which you could use to predict the stock prices not by algorithm but by just observing the data or observing those technical indicators so the next set of paths will path for you maybe after this case study that how you will apply those technical indicators, how you can add those variables and create those technical indicators. One of the indicator I would say worth trying is the RSI, which is the relative strength index, which talks about the strength of the stock and helps you do the prediction. So I'm leaving you with that question is not mentioned, but for you to take the next steps after you are completing this case study. So that's about it and I'll meet you in the new video, the new topic.